Uh, but we do we do got some news coming out of coming out of Queens. Uh, a Rod and, and his uh, group of buyers is still uh, trying to finalize things and, and, and bring the the, the, the Mets uh, um, into his possession. And he may be the new owner. Him and uh, J Lo and a couple other people that have been working together for the past couple of months. Uh, Eric, this is this is your area of expertise here. Um, are you comfortable with a with a Yankee uh, a, a champion uh, Yankee? Coming over and running the Mets organization, you might get some of that championship bravado onto the Mets. It might help y'all. I'm I'm comfortable with it for a number of reasons. One, he has always admitted that he grew up a Mets fan, even though he ended up playing for the Yankees. He was a Mets fan growing up, so I like that. Uh, secondly, the group of buyers that he's coming in with are, are star-studded, um, and it sounds like they will come in and open up the checkbooks right away, which we didn't really see the Will Ponds do over the last ten years. Um, and then, I mean. If, if it means having Jennifer Lopez at City Field on a consistent basis, why, why would I be against that? <laughs> I can agree with you a thousand percent on that because, you know, this, and this is, I can say this because this is before she was with A-Rod. She was actually, I think she was messing with, um, when it was Iglesias at the time, one of them dudes at the time. But uh, she, when I went, to, when I was going to post, she would jog, she would come out and jog on uh, on one of the, the old tracks or whatever. So, you know, that, that kind of gave me extra, extra motivation too. To you know, to, to for that sport, so I can I can feel you on that one. Right, I, I you know uh, that from the visual standpoint would just be amazing. But ultimately, if if they're willing to spend and make the team a winner, I'm all for it. From this perspective, though, right, if A Rod did become the, the Met owner, and like you said, he he was a, a a fan of the Mets growing up, obviously growing up there in the days of Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry and the '86 Mets uh, being relevant. Let's look at it like this from this perspective too, right? Over the past couple of years that we've seen A-Rod in the, the media spotlight now since he retired from Major League Baseball. He's got the eye for talent. He knows how to go out there and scout for players, it seems like. He's bilingual. He could go out there and, you know, make connections. He's trying to be uh, an entrepreneur at this point in time with his post-playing career. You would think it would be great, but with everything that's gone on too outside of it, you know, you look at everything that's gone on uh, with with the steroid stuff that went through out his, in his career. You look at the the whole media attention with him and J Lo being over there. You know, with uh, him being this this god. Everybody, I met A Rod. I met A Rod at the ALCS, and I can tell you, he's he's cool. But it's really you, you just look at it. It's all about the persona with him at that point in time. You know, it's really all about the persona with him. And he's, re you know, from what I saw, it looks like he's really into himself at that point in time. So let's say if the team does lose and all the attention is going to be going to the owner, no matter what. So we got to see with the Wilpons, the only reason why the Wilpons haven't spent any money over the past 10 years is because of the fact that they were a part of the, the the Ponzi scheme with Bernie Madoff. So there's a lot that ultimately has to happen here for, for it to succeed. And with Steve Cohen being this businessman, hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not a Met fan, but I do have some sympathy for the Mets and for their fans. Just go out, wh whoever it is, just put a winning product on the field and just, you know, it's like being a Jet fan and, and the Giants and the Giants uh, – town here just go out there win games and the fans will love you back that's how it's always been over the past you know 50 years uh with both the Mets and the Jets yeah I mean I, I I do I do understand the point of view of the if the if things aren't going well the the, the blowback will be on a rod and the ownership group and I, I do get that because he's so high profile um but I think you you take that and it comes with the territory you know if you want to win you need somebody who's willing to lead you in that direction is willing to say, Hey, look, I'll open up the checkbook and we spend whatever we got to spend. Um, now it also is going to take the talent evaluators, the scouts, the managers to develop that talent and make it into something. It's not just going to be about opening the checkbook. Uh, right. But I, again, I think he's a guy who wants to win. He understands what it would mean for the Mets to be a winner. Um, he understands, look, a couple years ago when the Mets made their world series run, I know it's a Yankee town. I'll be the first to say that. We are not competing with the Yankees. We are the little brothers to the Yankees. You can't compete with what the Yankees have done in baseball. But when the Mets were competitive, 
it made the city exciting because now we had two teams that had the potential to do something. So same thing when, when the Mets and Yankees faced off in 2000, again, it was, it was little brother against uh, little brother against the big brother, but it was exciting for the city as a whole. Um, the, the steroid scandal, that doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, I think, and I might be in a minority in this thinking, a lot of that gets overblown based off of how the writers of baseball view it. You know, we forget that for a long time, steroids were not illegal in the game. So when we come down on these guys for testing positive, after years of never testing for this stuff, we got to understand that, yes, the game had changed, our mindset had changed, but a lot of these guys were still playing the same game that they had played in the 80s and 90s where this was okay. Mark McGuire got a job within baseball. No one comes down on Mark McGuire for having a job. So if Alex Rodriguez wants to own a team, he should have that right to own a team. He, he absolutely should. And, you know, just to go back to your point, just with the biogenesis and everything like that, he went on Francesa. He, he basically made a mockery of it, lied about it, and then it came out and he wound up getting suspended anyway for it. But that's all over. That's all in the past. But let you me know? ask you a question, Will. Sure. As, yeah. as a Yankee fan, yeah. knowing, knowing the – quality of playoff run he had that year when you guys won that was what 2009 with cc right with cc, CC Burnett, Sarah, to share right yeah a rod played well that year for you guys if it wasn't for him there would be no world series i'll admit that so are you willing to give back that ring am i willing to give back that ring yeah i hey, listen i don't know if he was on the biogenesis at that point in time or no. not but what, the point the point i'm making is whether he was or was it you can't take back the feeling in that memory of that run right once it's you done can. it's done Right. That's it. Yes. Yeah. And, and the, Yan- the yeah. Yankee, my Yankee fandom won't even allow me to entertain that question you just asked, sir. I can't even entertain what, what you just said right there. My Yankee fandom wouldn't even allow you me don't to have entertain to. that question. <laughs> right. Right. I'll be the first to say, look, Anthony and I had this talk th- through text uh, about a week ago, right? right? And there's this whole talk about an 86 Mets, Mets documentary coming out. And then I said, great. We'll hear about how Keith Hernandez was on cocaine, how Dwight Gooden was so hungover right. he missed the parade. We'll hear about Lenny Dykstra's scam. We'll hear about all those things. But guess what? As a Mets fan, I don't care. We still won that year. So you can can say whatever you want about the team. What's done is done. You can never take back the feeling of when you won. That's right. 100%. You can't. No, no, yeah, that's right. And now, so now, in a couple of points, Eric, I want to go back first to you because you made an an excellent point. And one of the things that you brought up in your your statement when you referred back to uh, the 2000 and uh, um, the, the World Series. Subway Series. I just have a quick question for you. Who won that one? Uh, oh, no. Well, I could I could tell you who lost it. It was Armando Benitez because he blew about three saves in that World Series. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to. I had, no. I had, to, I had, to, I had to get that. Hey, I'm sorry. It's I'm all sorry. right. Listen. Listen. Right. First and foremost, I I mean I I live and die with all my teams. But first and foremost, I'm honest about it. We lost you guys. You guys were more experienced than us. You guys had the winning pedigree that we were yearning for. As I said, you go back and look, there were three games in that series where we were leading in the seventh inning or later that you guys came and took from us. We didn't know how to win games. You guys did. And that was the difference. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's always been in Yankees history, too. The Yankees historically know how to win games when other teams can't figure it out. Yeah. And, I mean, a large part of of that is actually uh, Mariano Rivera and him being, you know, the greatest at that position ever and – I mean, with, with two pitches Mariano got, two, three pitches, and, and nobody could hit off him. So that was a large part to that. But uh, but yeah. going back to uh, to A-Rod, uh, well, you, you you know, I guess you kind of spoke about, I guess more so his, 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 his bravado, his swag. But you know what? That's needed because it's New York. So I think that's actually going to work in his favor. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, it's that New York state of mind. And, uh, and two, I think that, they're not going to have that much pressure on them right away to, to win championships. So he'll be able to ease in. Yeah, you're going to want to get back to the playoffs because they were there a couple of years ago. Um, and, I, and I think that they definitely do have a great core. I mean, you, anytime you have a uh, back-to-back uh, Cy Young award-winning ace, um, Thor, um, they, I mean, the Mets, Mets pitching staff is top five, easy. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you got, you got Cano in there. You know, you got guys that, that that know how to play this game really well. I think that they're just there. There are a few pieces and health away from 
getting back into the into the playoffs, which would be which would I mean which would really be great for the city to see both the Mets and the Yankees. It's it's always good when you got the Mets and the Yankees are good at the same time. When you got the Giants and the Jets are good at the same time. Now, you know, if you can get the Knicks and the Nets to be good at the same time, that's always great for the for the city to to see those things. So yeah. I think A Rod coming in will be a, a huge asset for them um because of that. And then secondly, he's someone that the majority of the of the league, you know, especially as far as the younger guys looked up to to A Rod. A Rod was the guy in baseball for a long time. Everybody wanted to to be like A Rod. You, you know what I'm saying? He was he was that guy. So, you know, when you're talking about free agency and whatnot, uh, you know, the same thing we I guess it, kind of similar to with um uh was it uh uh Leon um uh from the from the Knicks that, that the Knicks just signed. The, Leon uh, Rose. Leon, Leon, Leon Rose, Rose, right? So where he has that that kind of connection with the players, A Rod is gonna have that kind of effect as well, where, you know, maybe guys that might not take certain meetings because it's the Mets and we're like, ah, do I want to go to the little brother team of the Yankees and you can't get that meeting? Now A Rod is the owner. Guys are gonna come in and, and at least sit down and have those conversations. And then you you know you may see a couple more of those big name guys coming in and, and playing for the Mets now, especially since A Rod has said he's opening up the checkbooks. Two things on on that point. Number one, when you mentioned the fact that A Rod and how players looked up to him, right? Let's say if you have a couple of those players that looked up to A Rod playing and they wound up failing and they either get released. Now there's a bad taste in that in that player's mouth for sure if something were to go wrong or whatever, but that's that's totally something that could happen down the road for sure. We've seen it with LeBron James playing with the Lakers. Many of the Lakers grew up liking LeBron James at that point in time. And then when LeBron went down and the team went on its skid and they found out that, oh, the trade rumors were happening, Magic, you know, the whole Magic Johnson sh- spiel – happened they they were all blindsided by it but that's just the reality of it and those players have to understand that it's a business at the end of the day and you know that's that's pretty well, he much won't be on the, he won't be on the field with them though so right so. but there's but there's always there's always that larger than life personality to it yeah. and number and number two with the expectations Alex Rodriguez always demands a high standard for himself and in pro sports yes there will always be that high standard of excellence because there's always an expectation of you to go out there and perform. Now, with that said, A-Rod is also a smart baseball guy. He also knows that there's going to be a lot of things going on. You know, you don't need to get that all-star at every position. You know, you need to find somebody that's going to go out there and play that solid defense, almost like a Jose Iglesias type of player. From He used to play for Detroit, I believe, and now he's on Cincinnati now or whatever the case is but you got to go out there and have the right balance of talent instead of going out there and just trying to sign the best guys and go out there and try to trade for the best players that's just something that you you ultimately need to have the balance of power and that's something that A-Rod I think understands but it's just that mentality of it just like MJ going out there and demanding greatness out of all of his players you just have to understand that sometimes it's the mentality of the player and you got to go out there and have that right balance of talent. And he'll he'll learn he'll learn that on the job though. You know, one thing about A Rod is he understands what it takes to be the one to be the best player in baseball. And two, he you know from being with the Yankees, he understands. I mean, this I don't think there is any more pressure that you can get in Major League Baseball than playing for the Yankees and having that history of all those championships on your right. back and, mm-hmm. and to overcome that and to get one. So he definitely understands that. And I, 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 I do believe that, you know, if, if he can actually, you know, wind up getting ownership of the team, I think he'll be able to instill that into the guys. Now, whether it be right out the gate or, you know, whether it takes two, three seasons for them to really get to that point, but I, he has it. So, and I, and I, I think he'll be able to pass it on. Plus, if you listen to A-Rod speak, you know, anytime A Rod's announcing the games, like you could just tell, like he he has that. You know what I'm saying? And it's right. easy for guys to kind of pick up on that from A Rod. So I think he'll he'll be good. My last point on A Rod, though, with everything going on with the Met fan, the Met fan wants wants to Wilpon sell the team. There's going to be instantaneous 
uh, this this instantaneous feel like, oh my God, we're gonna win now. We have an owner. There's, you know, he's gonna open the checkbooks, everything like that. You know, let's temper our expectations here and just see what's gonna happen. This this stuff doesn't happen instantaneously. Sometimes building a winner takes years to do. And you know, for Mets fans, it's been almost what 34 years since they last won a World Series. So. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm being. I'm being honest and upfront about it. I know uh, Eric definitely has the right to talk about it for sure. No, I mean, as a Met fan, I think the the first thing we want to be is we want to be com- competitive year in and year out. Correct. Um, you know, understanding the game of baseball, and understanding aside from this year, of course, it's normally a very long season. A lot of things take place, mm-hmm. and you got to have some luck on your side to be able to win. You know, there have been plenty of times that the best team doesn't win at all because injuries or some, something may not break your way. Um, so getting away from the Wilpons and whether it's Cohen, whether it's A-Rod, the, the immediate thinking would be is now we have an owner who's going to fully invest in the organization. Um, I think as an organization, we're in a good place. We have the best pitcher in the National League, if not in all of baseball. We've got a really good pitching staff. We've got Pete Alonzo. We've got Jeff McNeil. Um, we've got Michael Conforto. You know, we got veterans that we're hoping to come back like Cespedes, like Cano. So there's a core of good young talent there. Now the question becomes, is uh, Rojas, our current manager, the right guy? Is our scouting department going to continue to find guys that can move this thing forward? Um, but I think the biggest asset of having a guy like Alex Rodriguez as your owner would be his relatability. He's close enough in age to the players where he can relate to what they go through on a day-to-day basis. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked. When you have an owner who's in his 60s or 70s and so far removed from you, it's not relatable. It's just your boss. It's a guy that you can never go to and really speak to. But when you have a guy like A-Rod who you grew up watching and then you come across him on the field or in the dugout and you can ask him pointers, hey, what would you do in this situation? You know, what would you be looking for in this at bat? Those things can help elevate your whole organization. Um, and the, the thing with the Wilpons as Met fans that we're so frustrated with is it, it wasn't just the Ponzi scheme, the Madoff scheme that put us in the situation. It was just bad negotiations, bad signing, signing guys that were over the hill, signing Robbie Alomar when he was old, signing Mo Vaughn when he was old. We're, we're about to pay Bobby Bonilla longer than the Kansas City Chiefs are about to pay Patrick Mahomes. Like we're still paying Bobby Bonilla for, and he ain't played for us in over 15 years. So mm-hmm. those are the things as Met fans that we just want to get rid of from the Will Ponds. You got to be savvier than that as an owner if you want your team to be competitive. Yeah. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you know, prior to, I guess I would probably say, like, you know, since, you know, when that whole thing went down, I mean, the Mets were in the top five in salary, you know, pretty much, you know, every year uh, going back maybe like 10 seasons uh, prior to all of that going down. They were in the top five in salary. So they were actually, you know what I'm saying, spending money. But again, like I said, Eric, it's, it's got to be smart. The, the the spending has to be smart. You can't bring in these over the hill guys. You can't have contracts. Like Bonilla, so when you're still paying them, I was happy that that, that the Nets finally got Darren Williams uh off they off they back a couple of weeks ago. You know he ain't been he hadn't been on the team for years. So yeah, they, they definitely got to get better with that. And I you know again I think I think A Rod will because he understands that. I mean I know he he did make his comments about salary cap, which I don't you know I don't know if he he maybe he was confused. Well, he, he he didn't he didn't say he didn't say it should have a salary cap. He just said there needs to be a better understanding of revenue sharing and how salary is divided up. Um, but I I just think a guy like a Rod, just the fact we're having this conversation shows you what type of life he brings to the situation. He brings a certain level of excitement just to know that hey, Alex Rodriguez could be owning the Mets. So that's something that I look forward to. And, you know, if it's Cohen that gets it, so be it. That's fine. And I would love to see what his plan is moving forward. But we definitely need to just pump some energy into the organization because I just feel like we have a beautiful ballpark. We have a a lot of good young talent, but it's just something missing. We we don't have that electricity that we should have um, for a team that has this much talent on it. And a a New York team at that. Even even, even with the Knicks not being a top-tier team, there's still that excitement of you want to go to the Garden still. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fans are still – the Garden is still selling out with them being bad. So, you know, you're still supposed to have that electricity being a New York team. Like, New York just has a, has a swag that's different from any place else in the world. No matter what the – you know, what the what the sport is, what the team is, is that, that, that New York swag that is just uncomparable. 
So, you know, I think that A-Rod will definitely add to that. And, and it will bring a whole new level of excitement. That's going to bring a whole new set of fans to, 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 to Queens. That's because, you know, anybody that's an A-Rod fan, they're going to be like, oh, A-Rod is here now? Okay, I don't, I don't know about the Wilbons, but I know A-Rod. A-Rod, that's that dude right there. We, we, we might be looking to turn this thing around really soon. Let's see what happens down the road. Never know what could happen. Definitely, definitely gonna 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 uh, wait and see on that one. I, I hope A Rod is uh, is able to to do it. I would love to see that. That's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with RealFansRealTalk.com. Bye, y'all.